Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and in this video for tipscroll.com, I'm going to have a look at how you can join together problematic panoramas. Well, I shoot a lot of panoramas. It's one of my favorite things to take pictures of, and I like the fact that you don't really see the end result until you get back onto the computer. Yes, I know some cameras can make panoramas in camera, but you can't beat the quality of doing it in Photoshop. Let's have a look at a panorama now. So this is a panorama, a typical one I've shot. My feet don't move during the, the taking, only the camera rotates, and the secret is overlapping pictures. So here's a silver car with a yellow stripe, and in the next shot, there's the same car. See, there's a red car here. There it is again, number 15 and number 15. So you can see all of these images overlap beautifully. To join them together is simply a matter of going to File, Automate, and right at the bottom, Photo Merge. Now, Photo Merge brings up this little box here. If your feet didn't move when you made your panoramic sequence, you made a cylindrical sequence. If you went all the way around 360 degrees, you made a spherical one, but cylindrical is the way to go. I'm just going to add in the open files. That's seven images in this case. And then I'm going to click OK. And off Photoshop goes, looking for the overlaps and the joins and bending and twisting the images until they make a beautiful panorama. That's the idea. However, in reality, that doesn't always happen. Have a look. OK, now this is a particularly worst case scenario. It managed to overlap just two of the images and the rest, well, they're just terrible. Sometimes, and more usually, it's not quite this bad. Sometimes there's just a really obvious join and it just looks wrong. If that happens, here's what you do. Close down that image, you don't need that one, and just go back to your, your sequence of images. Here they are, still the, the same sequence of shots. Go back to File, go to Automate, go to Photo Merge. On Photo Merge, go to Cylindrical, because that's what you made if your feet didn't move. Add in the open files. So far, it's exactly the same as making a standard panorama. There's only one thing different, and that's down the bottom where it says geometric distortion correction. Yeah, it doesn't really trip off the tongue, but it does do some wonderful things. Put a tick in that box and click OK. Geometric distortion correction is designed to do panoramas where you have start images with lots of distortion, particularly from fisheye lenses. But all you need to know is all of the mathematics and algorithms that happen on the standard panoramics don't happen on the geometric distortion. It's a new level of complicated mathematics and it'll join together images that would previously either not join at all or join really badly. Have a look at this. So there it is. I mean, it works that quickly, that simply. Honestly, no trickery here. That is exactly the same panorama. The only difference between this and the last was that I turned on geometric distortion correction. It's not perfect, but it's close to being perfect. If you see these little cracked lines, never worry about seeing those because they don't actually exist. They're only there when you have certain zooms on certain number of pixelated, uh, pixeled images. But one thing you can control is this little checkerboard pattern around the outside. Now, if I go to uh, where we go, layer and then merge layers, never flatten, always merge, I can collapse the individual layers down into one. From here, I can get my magic wand tool and just select that area like so. And then I can go up to edit and fill, and I can choose content aware as the contents of my fill and click OK. And that will fill in the edges based on the picture that it has to work with. Once again, it'll never be absolutely perfect, but it works well on things that are, are fairly even in tone, like grass and sky and concrete. Now, some new versions of Photoshop can do this automatically, and that's great. I still like to do it this way because it gives you control and choice. But either way, there is a perfectly finished panorama from a panoramic sequence that just wouldn't work. So hopefully you found that useful. If you have, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos and tutorials here on tipsgirl.com. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.